Good morning and welcome to Take Your Life Back Today's show with Ralph Friedrich. So I'm going to touch on two episodes, uh, one today and then one tomorrow. Today's episode uh, is, and tomorrow's actually is really designated and dedicated uh, for a couple family uh, friends, excuse me, uh, a couple friends whose families are helping these friends going through the initial stages of recovery. In other words, one person has been sober maybe two weeks, the other one about three weeks. Families are trying to assist them in dealing with their addiction recovery, uh, almost like an addiction recovery coach informally at home. So the topic for today is going to be 10 ways family members can help their loved one through addiction. And then the topic for tomorrow is going to be five tips for managing triggers during addiction recovery. Even family members can help their uh, loved ones uh, preventing from getting any triggers by possibly changing their own lifestyle somewhat. And I, I know people shouldn't have to change their lifestyles for other people. However, if you truly love your, your loved one who has an addiction problem, flexible, flexibility in your own lifestyle might, might be suggested. Uh, as always, I want to give a shout out to a good friend, a fellow addiction recovery coach, a fellow life coach named, named Larry Geis. Uh, you can reach him at 516-485-2741. That's 516-485-2741. He is from the Geis Academy. He is an addiction recovery coach, a life coach. He will help you walk from your addiction to your recovery hand in hand. He will help and guide you for you folks that are out there that are looking into interventions. He can also help you there. Uh, go to odysseyconsultant.org. That's O D. Y double S E Y C O N S U L T A N T dot org from the Geist Academy. That's Larry Geist at 516 485 2741. Let him help take your life back and let him know that you heard about him on the Take Your Life Back Today show. Folks, want to give a shout out to globaleyeglasses.com where they are focused on saving you money. If you need glasses, and you don't have a lot of money to spend on them because the eye market is astronomical when it comes to markup. Go to GlobalEyeGlasses.com because they have glasses that start as low as $6 and go all the way up to $69 for the frame. Now what this frame includes is a case of cloth, single vision standard, non-coating, clear plastic lenses. You might need progressives or you might need anti-reflecting coating or polarization or photochromatic, or you need night driving glasses, or you might need UV protection, you need uh, the lenses to be thinner because they're so thick. Global Eyeglasses has all that available. What you need to do is go to www.globaleyeglasses.com and like over a hundred of you folks in my audience have already called me directly or emailed me or texted me and I have helped place your order. I have helped you order that great frame that you needed I have helped you with uh, the lenses that you needed. I have over 30 years in the optometry business, so not only do I help you with your addiction or your family friend with your addiction, but I can help you with your glasses. Text me at uh, 516, excuse me, at 631-599-0218. That's 631-599-0218. Or you can call my hotline at 844-405-HELP. That's globaleyeglasses.com where they a focus on saving you money. Folks, go to my websites, www.clearviews.info and www.clearreform.com. And of course, the website for this show is www.takeyourlifebacktodayshow. Folks, the clearviews.info is information on addiction and recovery purely. If you go to page 7 on my uh, website clearviews.info you will find every state in the United States and when you click on the state that you live in or your loved one you will find a rehab center maybe one or two of course there are many more you just have to go to the search engine on Google and type in your area rehab uh, type in rehab centers in your area and you'll find it there so go to my websites that's www.clearviews.info www.clearreform.com and www.takeyourlifebacktodayshow Call me at 844-405-HELP. The pain and suffering of addiction is not limited to alcohol or drug addict. Family members share a tremendous burden as well. You, as the family member, help and share the burden. Shame, guilt, fear, worry, anger, and frustration are common everyday feelings for the family members concerned about a loved one's drinking or drug abuse and use. In most cases, 
The family has endured the brunt of the consequences for the loved one's addiction, including the stress of a worried financial cost and life adjustments made to accommodate uh, the addicted person's lifestyle. Addiction leads the addict away from positive influences of the family. The disease twists love, concerns, and willingness to help uh, to be helpful into the host of enabling behaviors that only help perpetrate the illness. Family and friends are usually very busy attempting to help the alcoholic or drug addict, but help is the wrong. Uh, but the help is the wrong help. So I have ten uh, ways that you, as the family member, you as the loved one, can help. Number one on my list is do learn the facts about alcoholism and addiction. Folks, whatever the cho uh, choice is of the addicted in your family, whether it's alcohol or drugs, do the research. Learn as much as you can, not only about the, the vice of either drug or alcohol and what type of uh, drug, but learn how to help. Addiction thrives in an environment of ignorance and denial. Only when, it, only when we understand the characteristics and dynamics of the addiction can we begin to respond to the symptoms more effectively. Realizing that addiction is a progressive disease uh, will assist family members in accepting their loved one as a sick person rather than as a bad person. Big difference. The person who has alcohol uh, addiction or drug addiction has an illness, has a disease. They're not bad on the inside. The comprehension goes a long way toward helping overcome the associated shame and guilt. No one is to blame. The problem is not caused by bad parenting or any other shortcoming. The attendance at an open AA meetings is important for you as well as your addicted loved one. Families need to see that they are not alone in their experience and that there are many other families just like theirs involved in this struggle daily. Families will find a reason to be hopeful when they hear riveting stories about recovery shared at the meetings by others. Number two on my list is don't rescue the alcoholic or the addict. Let him experience the full consequence of his or her disease. Unfortunately, it is extremely rare for anyone to be loved into recovery. Recovering people experience a hitting bottom scenario otherwise known as what I constantly bring up, rock bottom. This applies to an accumulation of negative consequences and related to drinking or drug use, which provides the necessary motivation and inspiration to initiate a, to initiate a recovery effort. It has been said to, uh, that truth and consequences are the foundations of insight, and this holds true for addiction. Number three, don't financially support the addict of or their addiction. Don't enable with your money. Money is a lifeblood of addiction. It, it is the lifeblood of addiction. Financial support can be provided in many ways that uh, they all serve to prolong the arrival of consequences. Buying groceries, paying for their car repair, loaning money, paying rent, and paying a court fine are all examples of con tri contributing to the continuation of alcohol and or drug abuse. Money is almost always given by family members with the best of intentions because they feel bad, but always serves to enable the alcoholic or the addict to avoid the natural and necessary consequences to reach their final goal of rock bottom. Number four, don't analyze the loved one's drinking or drug use. Don't try to figure it out or look for underlining causes. Let me just take a look at the time. There are no underlying causes. Addiction is a disease. Looking for an underlying cause is a waste of time and energy and usually ends up with some type of blame focused on family or others. This paralysis uh, by analysis is a common manipulation by the disease of addiction which distracts anyone from the important issue of the illness itself. Number five on my list, don't make idle threats. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Words only marginally impact the alcoholic or the addict. Rather, actions speak louder than any words applies to addiction. Threats are meaningless as, promise, as the promises made by the addicted person. Don't stoop into that uh, uh, 
uh, scenario. Number six, don't extract promises. A person with an addiction cannot keep promises. They are clouded by their addiction. This, not, this is not because they don't intend to follow through with their promises, but rather because they are powerless to consistently act up on their commitments. Extracting a promise is a waste of time and only serves to increase the anger toward the loved one. Number seven on my list is don't preach or lecture. Preaching and lecturing are easily discounted by the addicted person. A sick person is not motivated to take positive action through guilt or intimidation. If an alcoholic or addict could be talked into getting sober, many more people would be getting sober and all the treatment centers would be not necessary. Number eight on my list is do avoid reactions of pity and anger. These emotions create a painful roller coaster for the loved one. For any given amount of anger that that is felt by the family member in any given situation. That amount or more of pity will be felt for an alcoholic or addict. Once the anger subsides, the titter-totter is a common experience for family members. They get angry over situations, make threats or initiate consequences, and they backtrack from those decisions once the anger uh, has su subsided and has been replaced by pity. If anger can be avoided, then so can pity. The family can then follow through on the decision not to enable. Number nine on my list, don't accommodate the disease. Addiction is a subtle foe. It will infiltrate a family's home, lifestyle, and attitudes in a way that, no, uh, in a way that can go unnoticed by the family member. As the disease progresses, Within the family system, the family will unknowingly accommodate its presence. Examples of accommodation include locking up money and other worth valuables, not inviting guests over in fear that the addict or alcohol might embarrass the family, adjusting one's work schedule to be home when the addict and alcoholic is planning one day, uh, is, is planning on being home too, and planning one's day around events involving the alcoholic. A spouse recently confided, confided that she would set her alarm to get up and pick up her husband from the bar. Don't accommodate. Don't enable. Don't accommodate that disease. Number 10 and last, do focus upon your life and responsibilities. Family members must identify areas of their lives that have been neglected due to their focus on or even obsession with the alcoholic or the addicted. Other family members, hobbies, job, and health, for example, often take a back seat to the needs of the alcohol and the addict and the inevitable uh, crisis of addiction. Turning attention away from the addict and focusing on other personal areas of one's life is empowering and helpful to all concerned. Each of these suggestions would be approached separately as an individual goal. No one can make an abrupt change or adjustment from the behavior that formed while the disease of addiction has progressed. In the beginning, family members are extremely focused on helping their sick family member and have very little interest in helping themselves, but that must, and I repeat, that must change. Folks, these are 10 ways uh, family members can help. Remember number one, do learn the facts about alcohol and addiction. Do the research. Folks, you'll be amazed what you could find on Google. Just Google alcoholism, Google addiction, Google as much information that you can absorb so you understand exactly what your loved one is going through. What is alcohol alcoholism? What is addiction? Number two, don't uh, rescue the alcoholic or the addict. Let him experience the full consequences of the disease. Folks, the only way people will finally seek the help they need is when they have hit the point of no return, the point of rock bottom. But if you enable with money, with help, with pity, you are not allowing your addicted to hit rock bottom. What you are doing is every time they get to a point, you lift them up. Let them sink to the worst scenario in their life, other than death, of course and let them experience what the consequences of their disease is. Number three on the list, don't financially support their 
uh, the addict or their addiction. Don't pay their car repairs. Don't pay their bills. Don't give them money for food because what you're doing is you're allowing them to take the money that they had set aside for those bills, for the, the car, for the food. What you're doing is you're allowing them to spend it on drugs and alcohol. Let them experience the full consequences of their addiction. Number four, don't analyze the loved one's drinking or drug use. Don't try to figure it out or look for underlying causes. There is no cause. It's a disease. It's a sickness. They're not bad people. They have an addiction. Don't make idle threats. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Don't threaten the loved one. That is counterproductive. Show compassion, uh, but be very careful on how much you do for them. Uh, don't extract promises. Remember, an uh, addicted person, whether it be by alcohol or from alcohol or drugs, will make any promises to get what they want, but guarantee you, mark my word, they will not follow through. So don't extract a promise knowingly that they're not going to follow through. Non number seven, don't preach or lecture. Preaching and lecturing are easily discounted by the addicted person. Don't say, well, you have to stop. Why are you doing it? Just let the person get the help they need. Be there as a crutch, not as a weapon. A crutch gets leaned on. Let the addicted lean on you. A gun, a weapon, is for offensive purposes only. Do not become a weapon. Become a crutch for your loved one. Number eight, do avoid the reactions of pity and anger. These emotions create a painful roller coaster for the loved one. Um, for any given amount of anger that is felt by the family member in any given situation, that amount or more of pity will be felt by the alcoholic or addict once the anger subsides. Number one. Number nine. Don't accommodate disease. Addiction is a subtle foe. It will infiltrate a family's home, lifestyle, and attitudes in a way that can go unnoticed by the family. As the disease progresses, Within the family system, the family will unknowingly accommodate its presence. People will actually uh, set their lawn to go and pick somebody up from the bar. People will actually leave work early knowing that the alcoholic, the addicted, is at home. People will not invite people over to their house because the addict usually embarrasses themselves and the family members. Do focus upon your life your own life and responsibility. Do not forget you have other family members. Do not forget you have a grass to cut. You have chores to do. You have to go to church. Do not focus just on the addict, folks. Make it workable for everybody. Remember, become a crutch so the addicted can lean. Do not become a weapon to execute the addicted with words, with threats, or idle insults. Folks, it is that simple. We all need to realize that whether or not you have the addiction or you're a family member, that we all work together on helping each other. Whether you're the addicted or not, you are part of this big plan of 10 ways family members can help. You are part of it. I'm speaking to the people right now that have addictions and today is the day for you to change folks you might say Ralph I will change but I will change tomorrow I am telling you today folks there might not be a tomorrow because there are people right now as I'm looking into the camera and you're listening to me that are taking their last breath on earth closing their eyes for the last time what if those people had your idea of prolonging getting help did they have a chance to even get that help and if they didn't, they have left the earth, not only still addicted, but also leaving family members sitting there second-guessing on why did this person die. This person might be closing their eyes and taking their last breath because they had an accident due to drinking and drugging, or because they, uh, their livers or their kidneys or their heart gave in due to drug and alcohol addiction. But family members and the addicted themselves, and I'm speaking to you, you, whoever you might be that's addicted, today is the day for change. Drop the barrier, that wall of denial in front of you. Let it crumble down like the Berlin Wall 
and start fresh today. Let today be a new day. Let today be the new life. Once you let the barrier of denial down and you start admitting you have a problem, then you reach up to your higher power and ask for guidance, ask for direction. And I am telling you, as time goes on, you will find changes that will make your head spin. Physical changes, no more puffiness around the eyes, no more yellowing of the teeth, no more constantly being tired, skin color coming back to normal. You will see financial changes because you're not wasting your money on drugs and alcohol. You will find relationship changes because maybe if you still were able to keep your loved ones in your life, they will give you a second chance. You will find spiritual changes. You will find uh, that working and talking to God each and every day and asking for guidance and directions, your life becomes better and you will be talking to God so much more because you see results. They might not come right away, but they will be coming. Let today be the first day for the rest of your life. Folks, I hope to God that each and every one of you remembers that a sober today makes for a better tomorrow. And when I speak of changes in your life, of course, I don't mean the changes come immediately. All big changes, all small changes, all come in small steps. Teach your children and your grandchildren to say no to drugs and alcohol. Please, folks, start thinking positive because when you have positive thoughts, you get positive results. Stay away from the negativity in life because a negativity will give you triggers and possibly cause relapses. I hope to God each and every one in my audience today has a great day. But more importantly, I hope to God that each and every one in my audience, you, 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 all have a sober day. And may God bless you.